Uh, so it's clearly about interaction. It's about, let's say, the intersection. Uh, it's not, I would say, as academic as, it, uh, as Sky. It's not so much about how people use things, but it's really about uh, pushing a bit further uh, this interaction, concentrating on, on more on the tangible aspects. So it's not thinking about how we interact with computers, but how we interact with things that are partly digital. If we say also embodied, and for a musician, it can be just thing would be can, could be the space, but it could be also a, a machine for making orange juice. So I think the scope is is very wide. Conference is so multidisciplinary. There are also different ways to show the work, like from the more academic and, and let's say, orthodox paper sessions. But uh, there are also demos are very, very important because it's not just uh, reading a paper or listening to someone explaining things, but you, you really need to touch and to grasp what these people have done. this reflection on music technology, how to, to design technology in a way that maybe the, the target here is more to, to insert this technology meaning, meaningfully in the everyday life of people. Of course, music and everyday life is not the same, but anyway, the problematics are very, very close, meaning that music technology was always a topic. It's not that because it's digital that is a very, very special problem. Music is always about technology. In the same way, everyday life is always about technology. Human existence is very much about using tools, making tools, since, since ever. So I think that coming from music, there are some very, very special things about music because it's about expression. It's not about you know, toasting or driving a car or driving an aeroplane or using a vacuum cleaner or whatever. We are coming with how to design technology for something that touches life and people's, people's expression in that case. And I hope that we can bring into this Thai community something that is interesting. I'm Paul Marshall and uh, this is Martin Calton Brunner and uh, we're uh, the program chairs for, for Thai this year and the other program chair was uh, Dave Kirk who unfortunately wasn't able to make it to the conference um, and our role has really been to um, work with the meta reviewers and the reviewers to, to draw together the, the papers that, that are presented at the conference. Yeah. And this year we put some special focus on the, on the hands-on experience on actually the showcase of physical objects and tangible interactive uh, works because I think in a, in a context like Tay, this is actually the thing we're interested in. And the other activities, so what I like about Tay is that we have an arts track, we have a quite, quite easy entry level work in progress section where people can show their uh, the things they're cooking up at the exactly. moment. And get, get feedback. Yeah, we're so trying to en engage a discussion here and then that's, work, that's working out quite fine, I think. Yeah. So that's the really unique thing about this as a conference. So um, like all conferences, we have a lot of people giving uh, paper presentations, but um, at Thai, people giving demos and, and the arts track, they're considered to be equal partners. So there, there's as much uh, emphasis on a, on a demo presentation uh, as there is on a, on a paper presentation. So this is a touch machine, and uh, I'm going to touch it. So hopefully you can see that it's responding to the touch. There's a lot of evidence that we attribute human qualities to non-human things. Sketching in one-to-one -one scale, making different versions from the blue phone. And all. So the specific question that we asked for this paper is whether the use of a virtual tool would actually res result in, a, in the brain's appropriation of a similar physical tool. It doesn't have enough brains. Like a web, uh, we use a ring switch and magnet.
We're making a CNC bot. And a CNC bot, well, I'm not technical, so I guess Fabian can explain much better than I do or Ali. But it has servos in it, so little motors. And when they are all put together, and I can't yet show you how because I'm not yet finished, then it can actually hold a pen and um, with your laptop you can program it to make a drawing. So it will move up and down, left and right, etc. So it's really cool. <laughs> and it even has our names on it. So the studios is the typical hand-on experience uh, of Tay. It's a track that this year basically gathered eight uh, workshops in which almost 100 people was taking uh, part in order to make from music controllers to interface exploration, prototyping, tabletops and other type of experiences that are related to tangibility and embedded interaction. I'm gonna make a switch here. The ducks. The ducks. In this workshop, we are creating a new kind of video games that I call hybrid video games because it's combining the conventional way of playing that children play with toys, with conventional toys, manipulating toys, and we are combining this with conventional video games. And they have chosen some, some, some collection of toys that are the cast of our game, and they are creating all the manipulation they need to create the video game. The graphics, the manipulation, and our software support them to don't worry about the hardware of the tabletop, just they are going to worry about the toys. They will receive all the info from the children that play with this game about what the children are doing with the toys, nothing more. The idea is to have an experiential platform for uh, designing haptics. In the haptics, there's basically a small electro motor that is it's very high frequent that we can uh, program to give force feedback and then we combine that with sound. So basically what we can do is we're designing experiences to get familiar with designing, what it means to design for touch through digital means. So the TEI um, Graduate Student Consortium um, is, a, is an opportunity to bring together graduate students in multiple disciplines, computer science, the arts, um, engineering. The idea of the consortium is to give them an opportunity to, um, to get familiar with the, the community, give them an opportunity to make presentations um, um, among peers, um, and to get feedback on their work so that they can um, um, hopefully become long-time, lifelong contributors to the community. We, we really don't know when we put the call out where they will come from and what backgrounds they have. So we have a, a student from Peru who's now in Hong Kong. We have students from many countries in Europe, from North America. Um, and part of uh, being at this event is to discover what new research is going on. I think what's really exciting at the moment is uh, new materials, new wearables, um, and also new forms of electronics that people can, um, you know, a range of people can use, not just engineers, but they're being made more accessible. So I'm very excited to see how these are being used. Uh, people who you might not expect, i.e. engineers or musicians, are doing with these. So there will be sessions during all the morning and afternoon. Uh, and then each that for the three days, which is Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then every afternoon, evening, there will be something different. Tomorrow we have the design challenge, which is really a contest. There's a, a prize uh, given by the Barcelona City Council. I can't quite close the other switch because my left eye doesn't close. <laughs> Uh, it's chaired by Bill Berplank. He proposed the, the theme celebration. Quiet on the set. She's going to blink. <laughs> so it's about playing, uh, game, uh, fun. Our next group is from Dresden. And we will see some challenges. This will take place in Universidad Pompeu Fabra, which is just near here. 
Federkraft. <lacht> Turn. Shift. Bend. Tilt. <lacht> Bounce. All the joy just for you. And so we can be together in this space. And when we get close, when we touch, something happens. And when we are together, we want to stay together. And we have to be really careful. This is rock, paper, awesome. So we started with this way of doing a tangible challenge. She can then pick rock, paper, scissor by putting one of the objects on her head. It registers that she's made a choice. So this could actually be shown in another space halfway around the world. And so she chooses paper and she lost. <laughs> I'm gonna turn on the first Should we record? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our concept came out from a reflection we did around the main topic of this year TEI Design Challenge, which is celebration. So as you can see now, the glasses are on the table and nothing happens. And as soon as the user raises the glasses, you can hear the song playing. Okay. So and the light gently starts to turn on. Okay. So cheers. 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 <laughs> As you can see, when I blink, I can change things. <laughs> okay, I, I know that you want to see it flying, isn't it? <laughs> from an education background so uh, you know but we also do a lot of tangible stuff so it's really nice to see the other side because a lot of conferences we go to are just too focused on just the education side so you know interaction and HCI and all of this tangible stuff is really important to what we do so it's nice to really get in deep on that side of it so I think that this conference was awesome for that it was really an excellent opportunity to see that part of it. Um, I really enjoyed the workshops I thought that was a great way to start the conference uh, it was a nice way to get to know new people. That's one, one part of the conference I really enjoy is the way that kind of brings a lot of people together that I wouldn't otherwise meet. We expect these days to have a lot of people networking and sharing ideas and getting to know new things and uh, contributing to this world of uh, tangible embedded and modern interaction. Uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to the arts track because I think it's going to be very nice but also the demos. We have a lot of demos going on and it's going to be very rich. We try to select like about 10 works here uh, from about 36 submissions uh, that somehow represent this idea of the tangible embedded um, embodied interaction from a point of view which is more like artistic, so kind of open exploration, not have a broader idea of a sense of what's, what's tangible. And the selection includes pieces that are more uh, suitable for being analyzed through formal way of analysis, others more conceptual pieces, and even some are more related to the context or even to the relations that they promote between people through computers and networks. It has to have some sense, so the interaction has to have some purpose, it's not vacuum interaction, and you, you must have something that you can learn from this interaction. Yeah. So um, trying to have a like, large breadth of different kinds of interaction, like very concrete, like with hands, like the cubes, or maybe full body interaction, 
uh, or more, more subtle through online like uh, connections and for instance like this piece from Open Crafter uh, which actually is about connecting two people who are very far away that are knitting and um, so the interaction is, is very physical because you can see the movement of the other person represented in a very minimalistic way as a little line that moves around and you don't have much more information than that just the idea that someone else is also moving with you uh, there is another one which is in flow that is just simply shown as a, in a very small scale here but the idea is is like to show without using any biological material to really reproduce the protocols that in synthetic biology you typically do. So, and to do it uh, through really, really complex interfaces that, but at the same time very easy to, to understand how a scientist is working inside the lab. This is color changing calligraphy. Uh, technique is very simple. Behind the paper, we printed carbon paste. This surface makes heating uh, character changing color. But also reminds me, this kind of dark side, like a torturing, mm -hmm. maybe giving a pain. Yeah. So did you choose this intentionally? Uh, this is exactly what I want to, to leave off, uh, open, because uh, that's true that uh, most of the people find it. So we have many mm, different things. We have the, the regular sessions, and that r runs for the three days. Also, there will be a concert in Razmataz, which is a, a huge club in Barcelona, also in this area, a concert with six musicians related in different ways to what we could call, which is a very wide subjective term, tangible music.
We're going to have four fairly youngsters in the field, although they have already been around for a couple of years. And we have uh, video interviews with the Illuminaire, so with the, you could say, the oldies in the field. Uh, and basically what we want to do is talk about the paradigms and the backgrounds of everyone, about their values, their aspirations, and the mechanisms that we can use and develop in order to get the tie moving forward towards the future. Well, for instance, for me, I'm, I'm, I come from cognitive science or social sciences, so my ultimate interest is in understanding people and, and what makes us human and what, what the human condition is about. And I use design and, and interactive artifacts and all these projects to investigate this. I think for many other people in this conference, uh, it's sort of the other way around. And um, you can stay in the middle, but you can also sort of temporarily step back to your own field and then try to find out um, how, how you think differently, because that will bring, I think, also new ideas and insights. And sometimes in those moments where I get into these spaces where I don't know how to explain what I'm doing, I'll go and I'll find it. I'll just find people, I'll find them, and I'll talk to them, and I'll be like, I don't know what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. And eventually in those conversations, like, it starts to come out. And I think the beauty is that it also has very much the different backgrounds of people. So we have artists, we have designers, we have social scientists, we have engineers, people from HEI, but also the mixture people with, from different backgrounds. It helps me to kind of steer what the values in design are and how I could develop for that. Uh, because we as designers are developing all kinds of things that helps Yeller again to develop his theories further. So kind of having that loop, but also having it made explicit. So it's very much reflection on action. All the action that we have, use that to reflect upon and learn from each other and get the field uh, further. So represent ideas but also interact with their ideas is a very important aspect. But also I thought it was great, uh, especially the mix of people. So for me, it's the first time, um, and I think it's a good mix of, of sort of the academic, uh, the arts, and, and the design community. And I think also what you saw in the panel discussion was sort of that the whole community is still really thinking about how to combine those those perspectives. And I think that's a great value of the conference to sort of uh, trigger these types of thoughts and uh, uh, and think about that that whole combination of the arts, design, and science and science field. So uh, yeah, very good conference. Well, I think for us, that was the most memorable was definitely the um, opportunity to participate in the demo session so definitely got a lot of chances to see other projects as well as kind of share our kind of research to other people and get a lot of nice feedback as well. Part of the reason I'm here is because it's a real hands-on literally tangibility conference but it's also a place where people bring things that they've made and they get a chance to show them. So we had studios on Sunday. Half the conference was there for the studios, building things, trying things. Now today we're off to the demos, and it's a huge demo show in the Fab Lab, and I'm anxious to see what people have built. And I think that's where the lessons are in actually building things and trying them. It's not interesting to talk about them. It's not the philosophies or the projections to the future. It's about the, the doing of it and the sharing of the doing. It's still kind of a rookie, rookie demo, uh, but the idea is to be super interested in um, So this is something that you would like to push or even have want to bounce perhaps. Uh, this is the wall? Yeah, as a very low resistance, uh, but it's not that elastic. And so we, we had to use other materials as well, so this gives the mechanical properties and this gives the electrical properties. For real-time live streaming, live performances, um, the system that we're building I feel a magnet. <laughs> Shifting oh, magnet. How, how can you feel a magnet? I feel the force. I feel uh, the force in the inside. <laughs> it's from the Empire, I think. And then, uh, if you want to so put one of them into uh, a yeah. certain color, you squeeze them into. Why are you squeezing? Yeah. It's already hard to get this through customs. <laughs> yes, it's very hard. Yeah. 
you see that as a therapist or a teacher, you don't have to go through to other menus, but you can simply switch mid exercise to another another theme. So it'll take me once I start it. It'll take me about ten seconds to calibrate your. Yeah. So you're already responding, or you think of something stressful. Or, or get really happy. It's going to change. Yeah, see? Based on your emotion there, it's going to change. Said you went all the way over the top. You're good. Well, as you see, I, I wouldn't know how to define. I mean, the youth, but really, I like I mean, this place and all this fair. I mean, it looks so crazy, all these things. So when I move that device, it's going to stay steady. Uh, it's like, uh, I don't know, how would be the, the market of the Star Wars bar? <laughs> so I'm really glad that we made this here, in this place, and that so many people are showing so many beautiful and crazy things. Let's uh, focus on the mobile phones for a second. Yeah. Um, so what you can do is basically send colors to your loved ones. Send, this is uh, to support couples in long-distance relationships. To, to send... So that's sending a message now to the actual page. If you hit the sun, it's going to be very strong. But you might hit something like oh, space debris, or you might hit another planet, or something like that. So, paradigm for the kind of computing that I'm interested in. Um, and I think it's an alternative to at least uh, three or four other really important paradigms that have connected people and computers. It consists of some person. And uh, I think of this as the, uh, the tool metaphor. That I've got tools I use, and I grab them and I manipulate them. And this is a sort of tangible world. There's also the, the graphic world, which I call the media metaphor. And there's a third world, which is about thinking like people, the intelligence world, and thinking of the computer as a person. But some of them have been around for a while. We've really gotten through all of those. We're ready for some others. OK, another one I'll call is a computer as a, as a vehicle. And what's important about the vehicle metaphor is that it depends on standards. There's two others, I think, that are important. I think, in general, we can talk about the world and life in the world and all of the ways that we evolve with the world. We call it life. Uh, and I think it's also the one beyond media is uh, in the interaction design, we're going to do wearables. And I think Steve Jobs is the one that led us into fashion. So these are my six paradigms, and it's what we design. We design vehicles um, and standards. We design media that are about engagement and authorship. We design tools for use. And I think this is really where TEI is stuck. Um, and I think the HCI world is very much tied so far to the tool world. And there's a lot of what we're doing is still sort of human factors of getting this right. Uh, and I think we can move on to fashion and uh, government and life. Thank you, thank you, Bill, for this inspiring and, and broad view that you got to, to the conference. Thank you.